tied up at one apiece between the California Quakes and the New York Enforcers. Certainly a very low scoring game as both teams almost going through a feeling out period. We've talked many times about the internal strife they're both dealing with. And now it's Jamie Conamack of the Mod Squad. First time we've seen her wearing a jammer helmet, breaking out all alone and now finding one of the New York Enforcers comes up from behind. This is Edie Bull Bowman. First time we've seen Bowman. Both teams now using a jammer rotation, trying to rest their lead jammer. It is Conamack and Bowman. Both of these gals on the slide and build are very capable of the physical play as we see the big elbow from Jamie Conamack. And now down goes Bowman. As always, you see the wide shot, Janet Abraham of the Enforcers. Once the jammer gets on, she rotates to the back. She is of the pack, one of the best blockout blockers in all the WSL. Conamack is going to try and have to use her speed to get by Abraham because there's no way she's going to be able to do it physically. Well, we see Heather Gunner with a blocker helmet on, Ken, but we don't see her hamstring wrapped. I'm still questioning why they're not sending Heather Gunner and that gun Heather Gunner out as a jammer. Obviously, they're in a very defensive mode, and Janet Abraham represents that defensive mode. But Edie Bo Bowman, I don't know if she was trying to be offense or defense, she didn't get it done there. Scoreless jam as a result. Conamax big elbow puts Bowman down, and we are still tied at one to one. As referee Don Lastra back for the first time after breaking his arm in a confrontation with Mark D'Amato, reforms the pack, and now we are underway once again. And this is again a little bit of a surprise. The second time we have seen April Toodle out jamming for the New York Enforcers. Toodle, 5'7", 150 pounds. And I guess these New York Enforcers just feel like they need to send some beef out there to match up with the boss squad, the California Quakes game. Stacey Blitz in an unenviable position. Oh. Two and one, but she is able to use the skates of the Enforcer women to tie each other up. This is Malibu Stacey Blitz out of Old Wine, Iowa, 5'4", 134. Former homecoming queen coming up on the pack, trying to break this game. And we are deadlocked in one apiece now. Karen Magnuson dropping back in the location to try and block out Blitch. Perhaps some strategy by the enforcer sending Magnuson back as opposed to Abraham. Magnuson certainly the more agile of the two skaters, hoping to stay with Stacey Blitch. And she uses that elbow and does exactly that as she high fives Linda Leisure. Another scoreless jam between the enforcers and the Quakes. And you see Stacey Blitz a little disgusted with herself, but you call her the homecoming queen. Well, I tell you, if these two enforcers are homecoming dates, they got they got stranded at the drive-in, so to speak. But you saw Melody Stacey get around quick, but Karen Magnus closed the door on her, Ken. Well, that's kind of the matchup that a lot of people were targeting in this one on the women's side between Malibu Stacey Butch and Karen Magnuson. And right now, we have to say it's about dead even as you see Linda Leisure breaking out for the enforcers. And this is Amy Craig out of Fairhope, Alabama. Leisure and Craig. Craig certainly the faster of the two. Leisure the more physical. And Amy Craig realizing that Linda Leisure and one of the other enforcers have broken off. Calls off the jam, trying to keep this one a low scoring, a bit of a surprise. That's normally what we expect to see from the New York enforcers, not a speedster from California. And I, again, I'm questioning why they're not sending Heather Gunnan out to combat the speed of Amy Craig of the California Quakes. It's very surprising to me. Well, I would suggest that Heather Gunnan has been battling a multitude of injuries. Here and she perhaps comes. she is not at 100%, but we will find out right now. As you said, this is the first time we've seen Gunnan with a jammer and helmet. And this is Amy Craig, the two fastest girls on the track for their respective teams. And Craig, with an uncharacteristic elbow, sets Gunnan right down to the track. As again, it could be very apparent. Heather Gunnan is not 100%. Gunnan is usually able to maintain her balance. And here comes Amy Craig. And again, Karen Magnuson back. Janet Abraham staying in the middle of the pack. Craig quick catching up to the pack very, very quickly. And there you see the card wheel from Stacey Blitz. And it works to perfection as Amy Craig is able to go by Karen Magnuson and put a point on the board to make it 2-1. to one. And Karen Magnuson goes right after her, Ken. We talked a couple of games ago about, uh, at least I said, how that move does absolutely nothing from a strategic point of view. But Karen Magnuson didn't like it, and the move got under her skin. Well, I would disagree. It certainly caused Magnuson to pause and it put a point on the board. At any rate, the California Quakes move out. There you see the cartwheel by Stacy Blitz. Magnuson didn't know quite what to make of it and allowed Amy Craig to go by to get one point. And now here's Sean Corbin with Roller Rules. Roller Rules, brought to you by Dial 1-800-AT&T for collect calls. I'm Sean Corbin.
and official in WSL. This game is fast and furious. If you blink, you might just miss something. Now let's see if you can tell how many points are scored on this game. So how many points did you see? Wrong. Martin passes Atkinson for one. Then passes Santiago for a second. Next, he passes Montgomery and Slopey to two more. Then, Tom Smith passes Montgomery and Atkinson for an additional two. That's six point Sun Dogs. That's the way I saw it, so that's the way it is. Now you know the rule. It is two to one Quakes. We'll be back.